Yes. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Módlmy się. Wszechmogący Boże, z palmami w rękach czcimy dzisiaj zwycięstwo Chrystusa. Pomnóż naszą wiarę i wysłuchaj nasze prośby, abyśmy zjednoczeni z Chrystusem przynosili Tobie owoce dobrych uczynków, który żyje i króluje na wieki wieków. Almighty ever living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus and the disciples drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you. Immediately you will find an ass tethered and a colt with her. You untie them and bring them here to me. If anyone should say anything to you, reply, the master has need of them. Then he will send them at once. This happened so that what had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Say to daughter Zion, behold, your king comes to you, meek and running on an ass, on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the ass and the colt and laid their cloaks over them, and he sat upon them. The very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and strewed them on the road. The crowds preceding him and those following kept crying out and saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, who is this? And the crowds replied, this is Jesus, the prophet, from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaimed Jesus in Nazareth, let us go forth in peace. Drodzy bracia i siostry, naśladując rzesze, które uroczyście witały Pana Jezusa, Idźmy w pokoju. Okay. 
sing. Yes, on through life's long path, still chanting as we go, from youth to age by night and day, in gratitude and in woe. Hosanna, Hosanna, rejoice, give thanks and sing. And on deep pure and heart, rejoice, give thanks and sing. Your glorious banner wave on high. Rejoice, Christ, your King. Hosanna. Hosanna, rejoice, ye thanks and sing. Rejoice, ye pure in heart. Rejoice, give thanks and sing. Your glorious banner wave on high. The cross of Christ, your King. Hosanna, Hosanna. Rejoice, give thanks and sing. Yes, on through life's long path. Please stand. Chanting as we go. Rejoice, give thanks and sing. Us pray. Almighty, ever living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. (laughs) 
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness. And found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven 
and on earth and under the earth, and every, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, <clears throat> He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you from now on, I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. And Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. And then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, 
He found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged the sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. And Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. And then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword will, be, will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father and he will not provide me at this moment with more than 12 legions of angels? But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled which say that it must come to pass in this way. At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Though many false witnesses came forward, finally two came forward who stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple of God. The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the powers and coming on the cloud of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? We have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? And they said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ, who is at the front you. Now Peter was sitting outside the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, you too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. And again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later the bystanders came over and said to Peter, At that, he began to curse and to swear. I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. 
He returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief, silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. And they said, Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priest gathered up the money, but said, It is not all the for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field, even today, is called the field of blood. <clears throat> then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet, and they took the 30 pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor and he questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, You say so. And when he acu was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so, the, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast of the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy, but to destroy Jesus. And the governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? And they answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? And they all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us. Then he released Barabbas to them, but after he had had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes, threw a scarlet military cloak about him, weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, they spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. And after they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You Likewise, the chief priests and the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He's our sin and God. Let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he says, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, 
My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one has fallen for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, There were many women there, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in a clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, And Pilate said to them, The guard is yours. Go secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. In the first reading, we hear the prophet Isaiah proclaim, the Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. And I think of uh, weary people today, perhaps you can think of some yourselves. It's the, the woman sitting by the bedside of a, a dying parent. He's the man working two jobs, struggling to provide for his family. The couple, unable to have children after years of trying. The, the person battling depression, feeling like it's hopeless. They're the grandparents watching their grandchildren suffer through their parents' divorce. The young girl at school, feeling all alone. A young man who's made bad choices that led him down a, a broken road. Right? They are the, the people who lay in bed at night asking, God, are you listening? Can you hear me? Do you care? The reading from Isaiah gives us a challenging question. Do we speak to the weary words that will rouse them, to, to lift them up? Or do we run away? Because we don't know what to do or what to say, or do we kind of avoid them because we're unwilling to get involved? The examples I gave and ones that you can think of are somewhat sympathetic cases of weariness. 
But then consider that the multitude of us who were wearied by the political climate today, can anything good come from Washington or from Springfield? And, and, and so many respond in ways that don't lessen the weariness, but instead they increase the tension, they increase the anger. In many ways, right? weariness, it's all around us. And friends, all of us have a responsibility to act and to speak in ways that lift one another up not tear each other down. But how do we do that? How do we lift up the weary, the troubled, the broken? In other words, how do we lift each other up? What is the ultimate experience, strength, and hope that we can share that truly makes a difference? See, friends, that is why Holy Week is so important, because it reminds us that ultimately, in God's eyes, each and every one of us is someone worth dying for. Beginning today with the reading of the Passion, we retell the story of, of Jesus Christ's Passion and Death. The three days, the Easter Triduum, the Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, they are at the center of the year for us Christians. You see, what Sunday is to the, the week, these coming days are for the entire year. On Holy Thursday, we, we celebrate the, the Lord's presence in our midst in the breaking of the bread and the, the pouring of the wine. We, we call to mind that it is Christ's body which is broken. It is Christ's blood that is poured out. And we celebrate the Lord present in our midst in the washing of the feet and call to mind once again Jesus falling to his knees and his love that is poured out in lifting up a basin and a towel and telling his disciples to do the same. Good Friday. We celebrate the Lord present in our midst as the crucified one, the one who empties himself, is humiliated on the cross for our sake. We celebrate the Lord present in our midst as the one who accepted even death, death on a cross, and, and then we too embrace the cross of Christ, which keeps us firmly rooted in this life in the human reality of our own suffering and death. On Saturday, the evening vigil, we celebrate the, the Lord present in our midst as the risen one, the triumphant one. And we call to mind that the chains of death are, are broken forever, that, that sin is, is conquered and accepting the new life that God offers us in Christ Jesus. So as we begin this week, we know the end of the story. Right? Jesus Christ is raised from the dead. The crucified one is the risen one. And because we know the end of the story, we can glory in the cross of Christ, for Christ is our salvation. He's our life, he is our resurrection. Because through Christ, each and every one of us is saved. Each and every one of us is made free. We celebrate the mysteries which are at the very core of our faith as Christians, the mystery of the Eucharist, the mystery of Christ truly present in bread and wine, the mystery of death, and resurrection, the mystery of love poured out on behalf of a sinful people, and the great mysteries of our faith, like the Eucharist, like the cross and resurrection. They're meant to be experienced, and so I encourage all of us to celebrate and experience the mystery of God in our lives by keeping vigil with the church and remembering Christ's passion, death, and resurrection this week. But more than that, we want to encourage you to invite another person to encounter Christ anew this week. This is your time to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. To walk with Jesus through Holy Week leads us to the truth that darkness is not the final word in our human condition, that light is, and the true light that conquers darkness is not of our doing, it is God who sends his son Jesus Christ into the world to end the long night of humanity's alienation. As we hear God's word anew this Palm Sunday, may each of us be reminded and know in the depths of our hearts that we, that you and I, are worth dying for. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen.
Please stand. Together we profess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our King has entered his city. Our palms and cries of homage fade away as the words of the gospel tell the story of his suffering and death. Let us bring our prayers to the Father, through the Son he gave up for us with love beyond comprehension. Our response is, Lord, have mercy. We'll strengthen the church in holiness and give her new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are to be baptized and received into the church at the Easter Vigil, that these final days of preparation be a time of transforming grace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who suffer mental, physical, or spiritual anguish, that they may find solace in union with the sufferings of our crucified Savior, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That Christians everywhere will live this holy week with a spirit of penance, reflection, and gratitude during these chosen days, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the grace to offer our own sufferings in union with Christ, trusting that he will use them to sanctify us and others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the sick may receive the healing power of Christ, especially Georgette Worcester, Frank Ryan, Natalie Kochnierczyk, Tom Hernandez, Beckett McBride, Steve Bolin, and all this in our parish booth in the Book of Intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gentle repose of all the faithful departed, especially Jack Rice, Philip Mackey, and Wood Pristo, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for Gerald Boucher, for whom his mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord and Father, with serene courage, your Son went forth to die for us. Grant us a share in his strength as we bring these prayers before you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death was, has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, for the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, the religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We pray an act of spiritual communion for those joining us from home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. If it is your practice to receive communion on the tongue, please line up by the station by the baptismal font at this time. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The announcements for today. The schedule for the Triduum and Easter can be found in the bulletin, the parish webpage, and on signs posted on the doors to church. Please join us for the celebration of the Paschal Triduum uh, next Sunday. Obviously, it's Easter Sunday. There will be extra, sometimes, overflow masses, so please check the schedule. There is no 6.30 Mass or 9 a.m. Mass on Thursday, Friday, or Saturday of this week. You can join us for morning prayer at 9 a.m. on each of those days. That's Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. The Adoration Chapel will be closing beginning this Wednesday at midnight, and the chapel will reopen on Monday, April 17th, after the 9 a.m. Mass. We are accepting food donations for local food pantries this Thursday at the Mass of Our Lord's Supper at 7 p.m. Please bring a non-perishable food item or two, and following Mass, join us for the Holy Thursday pilgrimage to seven local churches. Please register online for the pilgrimage. There are no confessions on Good Friday or Holy Saturday. If you picked up a rice bowl this Lent, we will be collecting them on Divine Mercy Sunday, the Sunday after Easter. There is still time to contribute to Catholic Relief Services. Envelopes are available on your way out and were included in the April envelope mailing. The Council of Catholic Women will be meeting this Wednesday, April 5th at 1230 in the Faith Sharing Harvester Room this week. We will be thinking spring. Newcomers are always welcome. Again, that's Wednesday at um, 1230. And the Nourish Caregiver Support Group will meet on Thursday, April 13th in the Harvester Room. If you're interested in attending, please contact Deacon Mike Perkins or Pat Mander in our parish office. The Lord be with you. Bow your head for the blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.